Hi, I'm Natasha Devon and I am a mental health campaigner as well as the author of this book, Yes You Can, Ace Your Exams Without Losing Your Mind. This was published back in April and I was due to come to the Yalk Festival this weekend to talk about it. It would have been my first visit to Yalk and I was really looking forward to it, but I'm glad I've had the opportunity to make this video and share a few of the techniques from the book, which hopefully anybody watching will find useful. I particularly thought that I would focus on the section of the book that deals with managing anxiety. Anxiety is something that anybody who has academic pressure or exams looming will be very familiar with, but it's definitely been exacerbated by COVID and lockdown, as well as so many of us feeling anxious and stressed about returning to a school environment in September. If that is you, you might want to try this technique. First of all, I like to write down everything that is bothering me. Sometimes when you actually articulate your worries, if you give them airtime and take time to assess them, you realise that they are completely outside of your control or that you can actually control them quite easily, that there are things that you can do right now to maybe abate that worry a little bit, or that they're just a bit silly really and you never should have been worrying about them in the first place. So I like to write everything down first so that it gets it out of my head and then I divide the worries into three distinct groups. The things that I have direct control over, so if for example there's a piece of work that you need to do but you're procrastinating, that would be a good example of that. Things that you can control, they're problems which have a solution but you need somebody else's help to get there. So for example if you've been sick and you've missed a week of school, you need somebody's help to catch you up. And then finally, in the third column or on the third piece of paper, I will write down things I have no control over whatsoever. So, for example, other people's behaviour or other people's opinion of me. Now, if circumstances allow you to do so safely, it's really fun to burn that last list. Or you can tear it up and stamp on it. And that's a symbolic gesture. You let those problems go. And then what you're left with is all of the things that you were feeling anxious about, but broken up into surmountable bite-sized chunks that you can tackle one by one. You can even, if you're a super swat like me, then get out your highlighter pens and start dividing them into the things that are urgent or even the things that are easy. You know, if it makes you feel empowered and in control to be able to tick things off straight away so that you know in which order to tackle them. I would also advise trying to avoid having what if conversations and thoughts at this time. When we feel anxious, our brains always try and imagine the worst case scenario. And the reason that our brains do that is because it makes sense to explore the worst that can happen in your imagination. And that way, should it occur, in theory, you're more prepared for it. But the problem is that when we keep imagining, you know, what if, particularly in relation to something as serious potentially as COVID, the part of our brain where anxiety and stress originate, which is called the amygdala, thinks that those things are really happening. Your amygdala doesn't know the difference between something that's really happening and a thought, essentially. So it prepares our body for fight or flight, which is your instinctual response to anything that makes you feel fearful or anxious. It will release into your system cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and adrenaline, which is the reason that you feel anxious. And both of these chemicals have been shown to have in too much amount, that's not a very good sentence, hang on let me start again, <laughs> in too large a quantity is what I meant to say, they've been shown to have a negative effect both on our mental health and on our physical health. So when you catch yourself thinking what if or saying to your parents or your friends what if this happens and seeking reassurance, try to bring yourself back into the moment. Remind yourself that right now you're safe, that everything's okay, that if you are in GCSE year, there's about one and a half million young people in exactly the same situation as you. If you're in A-level year, there's three quarters of a million. That things will probably work out. 
and that even if they don't, you have no way of knowing that. All you can know is what's happening right now and bring yourself back to a place where you feel relatively safe and content. A technique that might help you do that is mindfulness. I find mindfulness um, to be really useful. And once again, there are some simple mindfulness techniques that you can try in the book, along with everything else that I have just mentioned. So I really hope that you found those tips useful and thank you very much for tuning in.